Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video we're going to be looking at DHCP starvation. Now this is a video that has been highly requested and as most of you have pointed out, I really haven't uh, covered this very well or haven't covered uh, the network penetration testing aspect of, you know, penetration testing really. And that's very ironic because as I've mentioned, I do work in the field professionally. I am a network penetration tester. So uh, I, hopefully I can cover this topic really, really well as I do have, you know, hands-on experience with it. Uh, and unlike other, other topics in which I'm really, um, I would say I'm not really interested in. But anyway, uh, let's get started. So, uh, as I've mentioned, a lot of people are requesting this because it is a very viable attack, especially nowadays or even nowadays in enterprise environments as well. So, the first thing that uh, you would want to know is what exactly is DHCP, right? Before we even look at starvation, what exactly is DHCP? Well, DHCP stands for the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So the key thing to note there is dynamic and protocol, all right? So it is a protocol and it has to do with uh, with having a dynamic type of system behind it, all right? And essentially what this does, what this protocol does or is in charge of doing is it assigns IP addresses to devices or computers when they connect to the network. Now, the great thing about this is it automates the process of assigning IP addresses and other vital information like DNS settings, uh, the default gateway, uh, the subnet masks, uh, the subnet mask, sorry, etc., etc. All right. And it does a lot of other things really well. For example, one of the things that it does, uh, that it does extremely well is it keeps a track of which computer has which IP. So it, uh, that way it knows uh, what computer is using which IP with its own lease time and uh, whether or not it chooses to renew it, uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, you know, I don't want to go too in, too in depth with networking, but again, it's really ver it's a very very simple protocol that has a very simple working uh, mechanisms. Now, when we talk about the, uh, the the protocol itself, which I said is very important, with this protocol, similar to what you'd have with TCP, uh, there is a con connection or a handshake. I wouldn't call it a handshake, I would call it a connection. Unlike UDP, which is simply, uh, you know, a connectionless uh, type of communication. So essentially what's happening here is... Uh, with DHCP, you have the client and the server. So again, there is communication that is going to be established between the client and the server. Now, most of you are going to be like, well, my network, how do I know if I have a DHCP server on my home network? Well, most routers uh, these days, I would say most routers since 2012 or 2013 have DHCP already uh, automatically uh, turned on. And uh, essentially what happens is you have a DHCP server running on your router that, uh, assigns IP addresses automatically to devices that just connect. Now, of course, this, uh, many people look at this, uh, you know, from a security perspective, and indeed it is a really great feature to have because it really protects devices on the network as they assigned uh, IPs automatically, and uh, no one really knows what device is going to have what IP address. Now, with all of this, uh, again, you might be asking, well, why, why was this created? Why was this protocol created? Well, the reason it was created is uh, to essentially reduce the bear or the burden of uh, essentially uh, manually assigning IP addresses to devices or computers on a network. Now, for those of you who have been in the networking, uh, if you have been in the network industry or, you know, just for those of you who are, who are network administrators, uh, you know, from the good old days, I'm talking back in 2005 all the way to 2010, maybe around that uh, time frame. You know that if you are in charge of a network of about 100 computers, you had to automatically give them, uh, or manually, sorry, give them their IP addresses, uh, their static IP addresses, that is, their default, uh, their, their default gateway, and the subnet mask. Now, of course, that has to do with a huge configuration of networks, but you can see how tiresome this can become because let's say if, if a new employee starts working for the company, you have to go to their computer. Let me just uh, open up Kali here. You have to go to their computer and configure the network for them. That's really tiresome. And it's sad to see that some companies still have their network infrastructure like this. But but as I mentioned, with any new system, there are going to be the drawbacks. And that is where DHCP starvation comes into place. Now, before I explain DHCP starvation, it's very important to understand how DHCP works or how the connection is established between the client and the server and how uh, an IP is automatically assigned. 
All right, so with DHCP, it essentially, with a DHCP server, it essentially has a, a, a range of IP addresses that it can assign. For example, on my DHCP server, uh, the, the range of IP addresses is from 192.168.1.1 all the way to 254, a medium range network. That is a very small network, but again, very medium based. So again, those, that is the scope of IPs it can automatically assign to any new device that connects. Now, let's say I'm, uh, let me just create a simple scenario where I have my uh, access point with a DHCP server running on it and I buy a new mobile phone or a new computer and I connect to it, I enter the password and now what happens is the client, the client gets on the network and then sends a DHCP request asking for an IP address and the other information that is required like the default gateway uh, and DNS settings, for example, for example, uh, and this is usually done with a DHCP discover broadcast, all right? The DHCP server then responds with a DHCP offer uh, broadcast as it's called, all right? And essentially sends the DHCP, uh, the, the, the client then sends the DHCP request requesting for uh, the, the other information after it has been assigned the IP address. And then the DHCP server then finally responds with a DHCP acknowledgement packet or an ACK packet as it would be called and other details like the default gateway and the DNS server are sent and the connection is established and the least time is given to the device or the computer connecting to the network. All right, now let's talk about DHCP starvation because this is the most important bit here. And this is why I've come. So as I mentioned, the DHCP server has a range of IPs and it can be any range or uh, or, or it can be a, 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 an a unlimited amount of IPs depending on the size of your network. Not really unlimited, but you get my idea or you get my point really. All right. So what happens with attacks is uh, a, a, the attacker will essentially, once connected to the network, will flood the network with DHCP requests with the different MAC addresses and what happens here is that the DHCP server gets overwhelmed. Now, let me explain what's going on here. So let's say I'm an attacker with my Kali operating system. I'm connected to my network. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send my DHCP server with all DHCP requests, essentially pretending that I'm a new device connecting and I'm asking for new IP addresses. And I'm going to keep on doing that till I can... I can essentially take all the IP addresses that can be assigned and I overwhelm the DHCP server, which means it, uh, it, it ends up going offline and is not able to function as a DHCP server. So the whole idea here is trying to perform a simple denial of service on the DHCP server. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why is this helpful or why is this important or how can this help us attacking? Well, this is usually done to essentially get uh, to compromise the network further, because now once you have uh, you're, you have essentially taken down the, the the primary DHCP server down, you can now act as a DHCP server, and now all the traffic from all the devices in the network will be flowing through you, and you'll be able to sniff the traffic. You'll be able to redirect computers by changing the the, the default gateway. Uh, so, sorry, not the default gateway. You can change the the DNS server. So essentially, all traffic, all requests can be redirected to your own malicious sites, and that is what an attacker would do. Now, when we're talking about performing the attack, because I have to show you this, uh, the attack can be performed with a lot of tools. I'm going to be covering one of my favorites, which uh, really sh shows you how to do it really well, and that is. Uh, Yersinia. Now, I don't know if you've heard about it. It's a very, very hidden tool in Kali and it can be accessed by opening up your terminal. And uh, let me just uh, maximize this. And by typing in Yersinia, like so, and I hit enter. And uh, again, you can use the help menu if you want to. And we are going to be using the graphical user interface or the GTK right over here, the graphical mode. So I'm just going to start this and I'm going to use the G command and I'm going to hit enter. All right, and this is going to start up Yersinia, and as you can see, this is an alpha version. And uh, here we are, welcome to Yersinia. So we want to work with DHCP, so make sure you click on DHCP right over here. And you can go ahead and edit your interfaces depending on what you want to do exactly. And you can see you can edit the interfaces right over here and select the interface you want to use. I'm going to be using Ethernet. And uh, now I can simply go in and hit uh, launch attack, all right, and in launch attack, uh, it's now going to ask you to select a protocol. I'm going to use DHCP as that's what we're talking about it. 
Now, to perform a DHCP starvation, which essentially takes down the primary DHCP server or gets the DHCP, the DHCP server to assign all the IPs in its range, we click on send discover packets. All right. And as you can see right over here, it's going to have uh, the denial of service checkbox, which essentially displays whether this is going to be perform a, a type of denial of service. And as you can see, in the case of sending the discover packet or sending the release packet, it's going to have the, that uh, those two checked because indeed they are a form of denial of service attacks. All right. So if I hit send uh, discover packets, what this is going to do is this is going to target the default DHCP server and it's going to hit it with all the requests, essentially making it assign all the IPs and uh, make it go offline and overwhelm it. All right. And I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to start the attack right over here. And as you can see, it's going to it's going to start performing uh, all, all the uh, it's going to start sending all the requests. And once the DHCP server is starved or there is starvation, it's going to go offline. And that is how to perform a simple DHCP st uh, starvation attack. Now, for some reason, I did close it there. Sorry about that. Let me just open that back up. Now, when you talk about creating a rogue server, which essentially means you are going to become the default DHCP server, uh, what you need to do is going to launch attack uh, and you want to go into your create a DHCP rogue server, which has to be done, of course, after um after the dhcp server has been starved which means it's now offline so that you can take over you're going to create dhcp rogue server and hit ok all right and in here you type in the server id or, or the server ip and this is essentially uh the name which will you will send the uh you the the name of which uh the name of the server in which we will send the dhcp or the dhcp requests will be answered you then have the start IP, which is the network range. So for example, in my case, I can type in 192.168.1.1. And here again, I can just change this to, uh, uh, to my IP address, uh, which would be, you can just type in IF config and I think it is 192.168.1.112. The end IP, I want to target all the, the, the devices that can be connected to the network. So, 0.254 a medium sized network uh, the least time i would say uh, about uh, let's see least time uh, this is the time given to any address and then for it to automatically request a new one so i can say uh, go ahead use 120 seconds renew seconds uh, i'll give this 10 of course you can customize this however you want the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0 that is the scope of my network the router itself, uh, as you can see, uh, th this will essentially be the gateway that will be issued to the clients. So uh, in, in this case, we want the default gateway to be my IP address, which is like so. And the DNS server, which again, uh, you can give it a DNS server if you want. I don't want to give it a malicious DNS server, so I'm going to just give it a standard Cloudflare uh, DNS server. And the domain, which you can create your own domain here, uh, on the local network. So I can call mine, um, I can just call it rogue.server and you hit enter and you hit okay. And that is going to essentially start the your own DHCP server. And after there is starvation, all the devices are going to be connected to you and you can go ahead and start sniffing the traffic. All right, so that is how to perform DHCP starvation and how to set up a rogue DHCP server so that you can essentially, uh, you, you can essentially uh, starve the, uh, the the primary DHCP server and get all the devices on the network to connect to you and have all their traffic pass through you. And of course, there's a plethora of other malicious things that can be done. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.